healthy. In this video, we'll discuss how we can see electrons in TEM. Since human eyes cannot detect electrons, therefore, in TEM, we need something to convert electrons to either photons or the signal human eyes can read. There are four ways to see electrons in TEM. The first type is the fluorescent screen in the viewing chamber. The viewing chamber is also called the fishbowl. You can also record images and the diffraction patterns on photographic films, which you don't see much nowadays. The third type is the CCD camera. CCD stands for Charge Coupled Device. Nearly all TEM nowadays are equipped with CCD cameras. The last type is the direct electron detectors. They are super expensive, but ideal for low dose imaging. Let's look at these detectors one by one. On the left is a photograph of the TEM in MIC at Texas A&M University. And the fishbowl shaped chamber is the viewing chamber. If you remove the blank and turn on the beam, you can see the illumination and the light is green. Just a couple of words on how the fluorescent screen works. The screen is coated with doped zinc sulfide. When zinc sulfide is irradiated with electron beam, it will give off a green light, which the human eyes can see. The screen is pretty robust, but we still need to be careful with a couple things. First, try not to converge a very bright beam and devolve the beam on a specific spot on the screen for very long. If you do that, you may burn the screen, and you can see like a burnt mark at the center of the screen here. Second, cover the screen when not in use, especially when you turn on the light, the photons from the light may degrade the screen over time. The second way to record images is to use the photographic film. And this is the end product you get, a physical photograph. The photographic films are coated with silver halide. These are the silver halide crystals on the film. When exposed to electron beam, the silver halide will decompose. More electrons hitting a certain region, then more silver will have in that region and darker it will appear on the photograph. After acquiring the images, you need to remove those photo plates from TEM, then develop the film, scan everything, and reverse the contrast. It's a pretty tedious process, and the chemicals we use to develop the film is pretty nasty. I guess I was the last generation of students who still actually developed those films. I only developed the films twice, in my entire life, and after that we moved to CCD cameras. On the left is a schematic of a CCD camera. From top down, you have the scintillator, which converts electrons into photons. Then you have the optical fibers to transport photons. And lastly, you have the CCD chip to read out photons to give you the signals. When you have an electron hitting the scintillator, it will generate multiple photons, and those photons will transport along the optical fibers and get read by the CCD chip. Nowadays, CCD cameras are ubiquitous and can be seen on nearly every single TEM. However, there are some disadvantages about CCD cameras. In the oversimplified example here, when you have electron beam hitting the scintillator, you have two photons generated and getting captured by the CCD camera. It's like you have one pixel getting excited by the electron, but two pixels to show where it's coming from. This degrades the image resolution of your micrograph. To overcome this challenge, a new type of camera is introduced, and it's called the direct electron detector. In the direct electron detector, CMOS, the complementary metal oxide semiconductor, replaces CCD. When the electron beam hits the CMOS, it will be directly read as a signal. Compared to CCD cameras, the direct electron detectors offer improved image quality, resolution, signal-to-noise ratio, and frames per second. It is ideal to study beam-sensitive materials such as lithium-ion containing materials and uh, biological specimens. The downside of direct electron detectors is that they are very, very expensive. In MIC at Texas A&M University, we have one K2 camera, which is a direct electron detector. To put CCD and the direct electron detectors together, the signal generation in CCD is a multiple step process. 
while in the direct electron detector, it's a single step process. In the CCD camera, because you have multiple photons generated and they can scatter, you get a degrade in resolution, while in the direct electron detector, you don't get such artifact. Back to our TEM sketch. The fluorescent viewing screen is located at the bottom of the column. The CCD or the direct electron detector are installed even further down. In most of the cases, you have to lift up the screen to acquire images. In the next video, we'll look outside the TEM and learn more about the vacuum system.